All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started this morning. Bring everybody back on here. Okay, everybody see and hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning for uh, another Mornings with the Museum program. Uh, the theme for this morning's program is Fantastic Friends Part 3 because we are joined by uh, even more uh, Champaign County Museum's network members. Um, and in just a few short moments, we're going to learn more about these great local institutions here in Champaign County and what's happening there right now. Before we get started, uh, just to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Pat Kane, uh, Public Programs and Visitor Services Coordinator at the Museum of the Grand Prairie, Champaign County Forest Preserve District, and a member of the Champaign County Museums Network. Let's learn uh, who else is joining us this morning. So if we could go around and introduce ourselves. Kristen, would you mind uh, introducing yourself and what institution you're from? Hi, I'm Kristen Wilson, and I am from the Illinois Distributed Museum, which is a part of the University of Illinois Archives. Thank you, Kristen. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, David, how about you? Good morning, everyone. My name is David Subers. I am the Environmental Public Programs Coordinator for the Urbana Park District, and I work specifically at the Anita Pervez Nature Center facility. Thank you, David. Thanks for joining us also this morning. And Scott, last but not least, how about you? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Schwartz. I am the director of the University of Illinois Sousa Archives and Center for American Music. Uh, great to have you. Hey, thanks, Scott. Uh, thanks, David. Thanks, Kristen, again. Thanks to everybody for watching, whether you're watching live or watching this recorded. But um, before we get started into the meat of the program, just a few housekeeping things. Um, I, I wanted to go over. So first and foremost, let us know where you're watching from this morning by writing down in the comment section below where you're watching from. It's always nice to learn where folks are, are, are tuning in from uh, this morning. Uh, our friend and uh, network member Perry Morris tuning in from Urbana. Thanks for uh, watching, Perry. Appreciate it. Um, but uh, uh, if you're watching out there, let us know where you're watching from by writing that down below in the comment section. Also, uh, this program is designed to be, you know, a casual Q and A, not only not only amongst us, but amongst you, the viewers, as well. So, if you have a question uh, about our institutions, about anything, feel free to write that down in the comment section below, and we can answer your questions live. We always love it when we get questions because it makes the program not only more engaging for us, but for you as well. So, jot those questions down below in the comment section. Um, a little bit about the Champaign County Museums Network, if you're unaware of it. Uh, Champaign County Museums Network is a collection of 11 museums, nature centers, archives, and, and much more uh, located here in Champaign County here in East Central Illinois. Uh, we work together to encourage uh, best practices among uh, museums and museum professionals, uh, as well as work to collaborate in a number of ways uh, to show our community the benefits and available resources at our network institutions and to help benefit our community um, in a number of ways. Uh, so if you'd like to learn more about Champaign County Museums Network, feel free to check out our website at champaigncountymuseumsnetwork.org or by finding us on our social media pages. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, okay, um, with that, um, let's get into, let's jump into today's program because we're joined by some fantastic friends from the Champaign County Museums Network. So um, uh, who would like to go first in telling us a little bit more about your institution and what's going on there? What's coming up uh, in the near future? Ladies first, Kristen. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, are you seeing it now? Yep, there it is. Okay, great. So the Illinois Distributed Museum is an online museum that highlights innovations and innovators from the University of Illinois. Uh, we do have a partial in-person component. Each exhibit that we have has a location tied to it. And you can see that on the map here. Uh, it's all on the University of Illinois campus. And sometimes there are objects there. Sometimes there are pictures. Um, sometimes documents you can read. Or sometimes it's just the building where this really cool thing happened. Um, we have then our long list of exhibits that highlight, oh, if it's loading, there we go, <laughs> and that highlight 
uh, all our innovations and innovators. And we like to, you know, say that innovation isn't just new technologies, but it's also new ideas, new ways of thinking, new ways of discovering about the world. Uh, so it doesn't have to just be science and engineering. We have a lot of art, education, uh, business research that has uh, is also part of this. And I just wanted to highlight a few of my favorites. Uh, so the first one that we have is the operation game. So if you've ever played this as a kid or with your own kids, um, there's a man laying on the operation table and you have to use little tweezers to pull random objects out of him without touching the sides. Otherwise, it buzzes at you. Uh, and this was actually created by a student, a sophomore student at the University of Illinois for a art project. And this was the original version here. So very similar idea where you uh, could put your pen into the different part here. And um, it was actually called the box that sparked and made noise. <laughs> so it could make noise if you hit the sides there. Uh, and then he ended up selling that. Uh, to a game company and they created the operation game out of it. Our second one that I wanted to highlight, like I said, it's not just things uh, that you can tangibly see or tangibly touch, but is also ideas um, and new ways to, to move about the world in this case is Beverly uh, Schmidt Blossom. And she was a dance professor here uh, and she was created a lot of new modern dance ideas. Uh, so you can kind of see her page here. Um, one thing, one of her more popular ones was Dad's Ties. And so her modern dance was really about storytelling. And so her Dad's Ties uh, talks about the time that a few years after her dad passed away, her mom and her were going through her dad's things and they found a whole bunch of his ties. And so kind of goes through all the emotions she felt uh, going through that. And then the next one I wanted to talk about was uh, the Holland Tunnel. So as many of you know, the university has helps all over the world uh, and all over the country. Um, and so the Holland Tunnel is the tunnel that connects New Jersey and uh, New York underneath the Hudson River. And it was built in 1920 through 1927. Uh, one of their main problems though, when they were building such a long tunnel was all these cars release all this harmful gas. How do we make sure that it doesn't all stay in the tunnel? Uh, so the university, along with a couple other universities, was in charge of figuring out this problem. And so they built a test ventilation system here. And this is uh, this was where Loomis Laboratory is currently located. And uh, I just love this picture of, you know, this underground tunnel <laughs> built where now we have different buildings there. Um, they were able to figure it out and they got these fan systems going. Um, there's 28, 42 fans, sorry, uh, 42 fans that supply fresh air and then 42 fans that make the uh, bad air go up and out. Uh, and it actually has worked really well. There was one uh, very bad explosion in there, but within 56 hours, the tunnel was able to be used again because the ventila uh, ventilation system worked so well. And it's still being used today, so from uh, 100 years ago. On the last, well, last uh, exhibit or component of the distributed museum that I wanted to showcase was our tours. So we do have different tours that focus on different um, subjects. Uh, this one is our sports tour. So you can kind of come on here and it gives you all the different stops where you can go and see uh, the different people that are related to sports that we have so far. Uh, so that gives you the stops up there with the map. And then you can go ahead and click on the different people down here and see um, what they were up to and what they created. And the last thing I wanted to highlight is our Women in Science Lecture Series. Uh, we did this last year where we had different women from across campus, all different disciplines and the sciences, uh, talk about their research and what it is like to be a researcher, how they conduct it. Um, and we have these the second Tuesday of the month, and we will be having them again this year, uh, September through May. And you can check on the Illinois Distributed Museum website here in the Women in Science Lecture Series page uh, for the lineup later this month of who we will have this year. 
And thanks again, Pat, for having us. That's all I have. Well, thank you, Kristen. Uh, that's, uh, you know, a lot going on there, uh, you know, there with the distributed museum. I was going to ask, um, you know, with the with the pandemic, of course, you know, it's uh, there was a long period where, you know, museums across the country were, were shut. But I would assume that that your museum, you know, probably is poised in a pretty good position, being that it's all virtual and all online. Did you see, you know, uh, you know, online traffic increase during the course of the pandemic? Yes. Yeah, we did. We had a lot more people uh, looking at the the website. We had a lot more people working on the website, too. So we're constantly adding new content uh, here. And so since everyone was kind of from home and uh, couldn't do much stuff physically, they were able to do some online research and continue to write new content for us. So we we've had a lot of uh, interest in the distributed museum because of the pandemic. So, yeah, it, was, it did not slow us down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, good. You know, I guess, I guess, you know, one of the one of the silver linings, you know, to come out of, of you know, the pandemic, I guess, you know, a lot of uh, reaching audiences, I'm sure all of our institutions are reaching audiences, uh, you know, in different states and different countries from around the world that we never were able to reach before, uh, you know, thankfully to, you know, going a lot more online, which is great. Um, and, and Chris and I did drop the link to the Distributed Museum website uh, there in the comment section in the chat. So folks, check out the Distributed Museum website to not only check out uh, some of the things that Kristen showed this morning, but, you know, peruse around there and see what else you can find as well. Really cool, really cool Distributed Museum right here in Champaign County. Thanks, well, thanks Kristen. Um, uh, Scott or David, what do you want to go next and tell us a little bit more about your place and what's going on there? Well, Dave, why don't you do the nature stuff? Because it's outdoors since we've been in computers for a moment. All right. Happy to do that. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks again for joining us today, everyone. I've got a couple things to talk about here. Um, Scott, speaking of going outside, uh, one of the main things I wanted to talk about today is some programs that we have coming up for Take a Child Outside Week, which is in September. So I'll talk a little bit about that. This is kind of a passionate project of mine that we've been luckily doing for a number of years now. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here as well. We'll start by talking a little bit about Take a Child Outside Week, and then I'll give some info about our facility um, as well. So here we go. And let's see, you should be able to see uh, mm -hmm. our Park District website right now. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. So uh, one more time, I am with the Urbana Park District. So right now I'm on www.urbanaparks.org. And the reason I'm starting here is just to show you where you can access our fall program guide. So this is the main page as soon as you go on to the Park District website. And you can see it says fall program guide is here. Now, I actually have on my to-do list to ask them for them to fix this link because you would think you would click right here. Right, this just got added to the website recently. For some reason, the place to click is over here. So you can see it says September through December program guide. Click in that space and it's gonna start downloading for you. And so you'll be able to see our whole program guide that way. You can also go um, to programs here and even click on nature programs, for instance, and it'll take you to some other places where you can get more information about our upcoming programs. There's some other guide information there as well. So once that downloads for you, you should have the program guide, which I have right here. It's a long guide. Uh, there's also a um, physical copy of this that comes to Urbana residents. You can also pick this up at any park district facility if you'd like a physical copy. Hopefully you can see this that I'm holding right now, even though I'm sharing my screen. Looks like this, but to make it a little easier, we have an electronic copy too. So uh, our nature programs are down pretty far. I'm going to skip right ahead to the page that I want to show everyone. This is page, oops, this is page 49 in the Urbana Park District Program Guide. So. As discussed, I'm going to talk a little bit about Take a Child Outside Week, which is this national effort that was started about a decade and a half ago by the uh, North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. And since then, it's kind of picked up steam and has a number of uh, partner organizations throughout the country. Uh, we are one of those partner organizations. So all of those uh, sort of 
groups are going to do some sort of programming for this week. Now, our programs are happening from September 17th through 26th with the Urbana Park District. Uh, Take a Child Outside week occurs at the same time every year. The uh, uh, the dates for it each year are, it goes until September 30th, and it's one week, but you can see we're starting early. So uh, we start on September 17th, and we have a good number of programs throughout that time, even before Take a Child Outside week starts to really get people some inspiration and excitement to kind of do some things on their own outside too, outside of of doing things with the park district. So we really want to encourage people to check out some new places. Maybe you haven't visited a um, Champaign County Forest Preserve site recently. Maybe there's a new one that you haven't been to yet. Maybe you'd like to go on a camping trip to Forest Glen. There's all kinds of different sorts of places to go and things to do outside. So that's really our goal here is to inspire uh, adults to take their children outside and spend a little bit more time outside. And the initiative was sort of inspired because of this disconnect that uh, we see that a lot of young people have with nature today. It's kind of an interesting dynamic because those young people know a lot about the threats to our natural world, but don't have as much of that hands-on experience outside as previous generations may have had. So I'm gonna just kind of uh, touch on some of the programs that we're offering during this week. We're gonna kick it off with a free outdoor movie night where we're gonna screen WALL-E, you can see. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun. We have several repeating programs. Our play dates with nature here are kind of unstructured play times where we're providing some extra loose parts and a nature play facilitator. You can see there are several dates for those. So they're going to be a lot of fun as well. They're kind of uh, um, free programs that you can sign up by calling. Uh, and that's one thing that I should have mentioned. Most of these programs are free. You can see Two Stars is free, uh, but we do ask for pre-registration for most of these. There are only a couple of programs that we are um, charging fees for for this week, one of which is the Outdoor Family Classroom, which is going to be a little bit more of a, a longer. You can see it's 9 to noon. We're going to offer snack. We're going to have a little bit more of an extensive structure to that program. So that's one we're charging for. Another one I'm really excited about, we're partnering with the CU Community Fab Lab. Uh, if you're familiar with them, they do a lot of really cool stuff in the community. And they're partnering with us to do a fort building afternoon where um, actually participants get to take their own fort building kit home. This is a free program that also has some swag to go with it. We've got a moon walk, a log busters walk, and then there's also a pride walk that we're doing on Sunday September 26th. That one is not on this page. Let me see. It doesn't look like my previous page is loaded. Let me go down on here. And I believe, yep, our pride hike is also part of Chicken Child Outside Week. So this is kind of in celebration of the Champaign Urbana Pride Fest, which is that weekend. So you can see we've got a whole bunch of programs that we're trying to offer. We're really excited about this, and I'm super looking forward to it. So if you have any questions about the programs, feel free to put them in the chat. Reach out to us at um, at the Nature Center or anyone at urbanaparks.org. I'll go ahead and pull up our Nature Center page right now where you can see our phone number and our address. We're at 1505 North Broadway in Urbana, Illinois. This is uh, the location of all of those Ticket Child Outside programs. We'll start here at the Nature Center. If you're not familiar with it, we share a parking lot with the uh, the pool, the Family Aquatic Center with the big slides and whatnot. The last thing I'll say is our facility is open right now on the weekends, but uh, only for a few more days. We actually have a building closure uh, starting um, on August 16th through August 29th. Our building will be closed for those two weeks for a deep clean and a reset after our Nature Day Camp program. After that, we'll actually be open um, seven days a week for all of September and October. So come out and visit us. We're really looking forward to seeing you. You can check out our field station and our observation room. Oops, sorry. I, I see I'm sharing a bunch of stuff now. Here's a picture of the field station that you could visit, the observation room where you can do some bird watching or have a nice relaxing sit down. So any questions, comments, hey, feel free to send them my way. Oops, uh, sorry about that. I'm going to stop my share. Oh, don't worry, David. No, that's great. Lots of good stuff going on there at uh, Urbana Park District, and you know, right there around uh, Anita Purvis Nature Center. And you know, much like um, much like I was talking about, you know, with Kristen with the uh, Distributing Museum, you know, um, with the pandemic outdoor programs, you know, I would, I, I, I was wondering, you know, how how have outdoor programs gone so far, you know, this summer, and you know, as we're getting into fall there 
at Urbana Park District. Going okay? Yeah, yeah. We haven't done a ton of them. We, we have started to do more this summer, though. We've had some really successful fishing programs. We had a nice Arbor Day celebration that was outside. Our fishing programs at Crystal Lake Park have been a lot of fun, really successful with those. And then our day camp, it's nice to be able to have, you know, nature camp is always meant to be mostly outside. So it, it worked really well for us to have kind of a limited capacity camp because we do have to go inside sometimes. But it, it's nice to be feel a little more secure in being outdoors. Sure, sure. Yeah, and I um, and uh, our our good friend Perry uh, wanted to remind folks to look for David's News Gazette Inside Out column uh, this Sunday, uh, August fifteenth, that talks about take a child outside. Uh, so thanks for that, Perry. Um, but yeah, and thanks to David for writing that article, and thanks for talking, you know, so much about take a child outside week, and you know, such a great initiative nationwide and you know locally right here as well. So that thanks for all your been looks fun. It'll be a good one. Yep. We're real excited. I was I was interested about the mud kitchen too. That sounds much like what I like to do as a kid. Get real dirty, get real messy there. And I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. There's all kinds of benefits from that too. So, you know, it's really good to encourage that. Yeah. Yeah. So the fishing, you get to keep the fish or you throw them back? They go back, yeah. We uh, with our programs anyway. I think they're that you may be able to take a certain amount of fish from Crystal Lake. I'm not totally sure, but we were some people wanted to take them and we had to gently encourage them to return them to the water. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Well, thank you, David. Um, I, uh, and I dropped links to the websites that you were showing folks there in the comments and in the, in the chat. So folks check those out. If you're watching, check out the Urbana Park District website. Also learn more about the United Purpose Nature Center as well. Um, and you can find, as David showed us, that program guide for the fall there also. So, all right, well, Scott, you're the last one here, Scott. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll let you take it from here. Tell us more about uh, Sousa Archives and Center for American Music and what's going on there. All right, well, Pat, thanks. It's great to, um, to be with everybody um, today, even if it is a virtual environment. The Sousa Archives is located in the Harding Band Building on campus. Um, so for anybody who enjoys a home football game and loves the band, um, you start here at the Harding Building and you walk to the stadium. And of course, as part of that, you enjoy the percussion section. So the Archives and Museum is located inside the Harding Band Building. It's at the corner of 6th and Gregory. And um, we have technically been open by appointment um, pretty much since we were allowed to do that and have done quite a few um, small group tours. And um, our collections cover everything from wind band music with John Philip Sousa being kind of the focus of that to electronic music, computer music, world music, and everything in between. Um, so, you know, if you love music or want to discover a new aspect of music, this is the place to come and um, have fun. Because, quite frankly, if it's not fun, why would you want to come here? Um, speaking of um, taking um, kids outside, um, essentially, um, we have over the, well, 15 years now, have sponsored the One Community Together programming um, for the Sweet Corn Festival um, in Urbana. This year, Urbana um, basically um, closed down the festival, but we've decided that we are going to keep our One Community Together moving forward. So we've got a wonderful selection of music performances live um, at the Rose Bowl from um, 12 to 6. So if you're looking for live music experiences, everything from the Bodacious String Band and the BBL Jazz Band to Jordan K and um, Tune Wrangling, um, which I always enjoy because you never know what's going to come out of Jordan, but it always is folksy and fun. We've got some great jazz performances, great gospel performances, um, and Every year we always um, bring the three high school marching bands um, to the center of Urbana for an hour's performance. And of course, we can't do that this year because, quite frankly, it would be nearly a thousand kids. And so um, our marching band event is actually going to be a recorded performance. Been recording the um, High school bands, um, last week it was um, Centennial in Urbana. Um, this Thursday, we're recording um, Central. 
and next Tuesday, the Marching Illini. So essentially, we'll be showing an hour um, of footage of the bands performing, our communities for great marching band organizations. So lots of fun. Um, and um, you know, if you're you're a lover of, of parades and marching bands and the Marching Illini, then by gum, you know, come on out um, to the Rose Bowl right in the middle of Urbana to check out the live music, and we will be streaming everything. Um, so for those people who can't come to the live performance, they'll be able to watch the live performance you know, online. And for those that who want to see the marching band stuff, we are going to stream that for everybody, including streaming on site. Um, I confess this is a first-time adventure, so we'll wait and see how that comes about. We've got a ton of children's programming, um, everything from the Urvana um, van and the children's activities, a bean toss, a four square, um, a parachute um, game. Um, we have um, some coloring activities. I mean, just a variety of things that the kids can do while they're listening to live music. Or I should say, the kids can do while the parents are enjoying the music um, and keeping the kids corralled. So it, it should be a lot of fun on the the twenty first. So I you know, invite everybody to come out. Um, and the best part of all the programming is it's free. All you got to do is bring yourself to it and a warm heart for some outstanding music. Um, and you'll see a bunch of us running around like chickens with our heads cut off a bit. I'm um, trying to figure out how to keep the technology going, um, which might be just as comical as the um, Jordan K tune wrangle. Um, so other activities, um, the pandemic um, did really force us to rethink our model. Um, we, we often did live tours. And we decided that, well, we can't do those right now. Can we do virtual tours? And we've, we've created um, two so far, one on Hawaiian guitars, which, believe it or not, is extraordinarily popular. I never thought that um, Hawaiian guitars in the middle of corn and soy fields would be such a popular exhibition, but it is. Um, and you you get to see some extraordinary instruments. And then the other one, kind of the flip side, you've got great party music with Hawaiian guitars. And then we flip the prohibition, the, the, the fight between those who want to keep everything dry and from those who want to keep everything wet. Um, and so two interesting online exhibits. All you have to do is, you know, SUSA Archives, S-O-U-S-A-A-R-C-H-I-V-E-S, -S, all right, one word, dot org, and then click on your browser, and it'll take you to our front door, and you can then enjoy both of those or make an appointment. Another um, thing that has grown out of it, I think um, last December, our Museums Network played this wonderful trivia game that... Um, Kristen kind of helped develop. It was a real hoot. And I said, well, hell's bells. Can we do something to create a music trivia game? And she says, well, that, um, yes, um, but you're going to have to write the computer program. And I said, okay, hunky dunky. And so this past spring and summer, we have created a new online game called Music Trivia that essentially highlights trivial information, frivolous information about America's music. In fact, we're going to be unveiling that on August 29th. And it is a game that you can play in groups. It's a game you can play by yourself. It's a game you can keep scores and challenge each other. And I hope in the coming months we'll be able to have movies and um, essentially sound files that you can um, see if you can guess. Um, and quite frankly, it it's all supposed to be fun. Um, we're still developing it, so stay tuned on that. That, that will be available um, on the Sousa Archives website. And um, so far, all of my staff have had a good time creating the questions and um, then seeing if we can stump each other with the answers. Um, I confess, yes, I have been stumped once or twice. So that's a good thing. Um, 
So, you know, lots of cool stuff happening. And I, you know, would love to have folks come here um, and visit us, you know, on site. But you're more than welcome to visit us online and have fun that way. Well, cool. Well, thank you, Scott. Thanks for, you know, all the, uh, all the information about the One Community Together programming and for, you know, coordinating that. I, I, I know it's a large undertaking and it's a huge effort, but, you know, great to see that, that programming continuing in the community and, and, you know, offering, you know, as you said, all these great free opportunities to the public and a lot going on, um, you know, there uh, on that Saturday, next Saturday, correct? A week mm -hmm. from this Saturday, you know, from yeah. 12 to 6. And, you know, go check out SUSE archives either in person or online. I dropped a link to uh, link to uh, SUSE archives there in the comments and in the chat so you can learn more. Um, but uh, thank you so much, Scott. And uh, thanks, David, Kristen, again. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time here, uh, going a little bit over 1030. But uh, really appreciate you three uh, for you know sharing about your institutions, what's going on, and and the work that you continue to do, uh, you know, for not only the local community but also you know community across the nation, across the world too, with all this online stuff too. So, um, any uh, any final words from the three of you? Thanks so much for having us. It's been a lot of fun. Yes. Thanks, Pat. Yep, get some children outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. And more importantly, come visit us. Yeah, yeah. If you can, you know, get out and visit these these facilities in person. Uh, I'll also say Museum of the Grand Prairie is open Tuesdays through Saturdays from 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, but we're also doing a lot of stuff online as well. So check out our website and social media pages uh, too. So, But uh, with that, um, uh, we're going to head out of here. Um, until next time, uh, next month, September 8th, we're going to do uh, another Mornings with the Museum program, Fantastic Friends Part 4, where we'll be joined by even more members from the Champaign County Museums Network so we can learn uh, more about uh, these great local institutions here in Champaign County and East Central Illinois. All right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your morning. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you again. That's good.